Welcome people. Hope you're fine and resilient and determined just like I am. Yay. <laughs> Sorry, I have to be a bit more silly. I can't stay uh, serious for too long. Especially uh, looking ahead of being serious for a little while going through these six exercises which relate to the previous lecture on arithmetic and modulation so let's see how quickly we can get through these things without getting bogged down so the first one to do is to verify amplitude modulation ring modulation and frequency modulation spectra okay so to do that what we have is a frequency scope which will display the uh, spectrum of a sound. So here is my 200 hertz sine wave. Double check that. There it is. Uh, so what you have with spectral analysis uh, is that lower frequencies have less resolution. That's why it's so ugly. We'll get to the detail of that um, maybe in a week or so in a few lectures. So I'll choose to use a higher frequency and hopefully not pierce your ears. Uh, I guess it will be fine. Okay, so that's my 2K. And you see, I can see a more precise thing over there. Okay, so AM is the multiplication with a unipolar signal. So what I'll do is I'll multiply with 100 hertz. Uh, let's take 300 hertz and make it unipolar. Po I'll be so funny this time around. This will just blast. Okay, so unipolar range zero to one. And this is what you get. So you get a sideband 300 Hertz below 2K, 300 Hertz above 2K. Okay, so that's amplitude modulation. Now ring modulation is the same thing, except the modulator is bipolar and behold, the middle frequency, the 2K, is actually totally gone. Amazing. And then frequency modulation has everything to do with using an oscillator to modulate the frequency of another mod oscillator, which we achieve by putting this oscillator into the uh, frequency parameter of the previous one. Oh. Uh, but what I will do here is I will just keep this code uh, as a reference for AM and RM and then use this code for demonstrating FM just because we are uh, archiving this. I'm going to be posting this file. Uh, okay, so from here, the thing to do is understand that this is my modulation frequency. And in FM, the modulation frequency is uh, actually going to determine the sidebands. Uh, and then I have to specify a range which will kind of incorporate the center frequency, which is the carrier frequency and the uh, depth of modulation. Uh, so let's try to mimic something we've just had now, regardless of this being linear. Uh, I won't go into that, sorry. So that will be 1700 and 2300, something like that. Okay, and let's listen and hear this one, if I select it appropriately. And this is what you get, so very similar to previous one, same distance of the sidebands, and many more sidebands progressively decreasing in amplitude. So that's the similarity between these three techniques and the created sidebands. And then, the final thing about this question is predict what happens with square waves. Now, in order to predict this, uh, what you're actually thinking about is decomposition into sine waves. Uh, so 
for every component of the carrier in this case this is my carrier for every component I will have uh, two sidebands okay so let's try this so this was my original uh, ring modulation let's go back to amplitude modulation with the unipolar signal okay and then uh, what I'm doing is I'm saying this is now mm, ba, 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 this is now a pulse dot AR and the result is if I select this properly this okay so what you get is that for each of the harmonics you get the two sidebands okay now if you do it the other way around if you maintain a sinusoidal carrier but you take um, pulse like modulation signal you see then actually it acts as if all the harmonics of this pulse wave would be creating further sidebands okay and then what you might expect if I do both well then it's a kind of uh, combinatorial challenge to figure out what are all the frequencies getting more dense spectra like that cool and then uh, similarly for an FM scenario let me just revert to sine oscillators there uh, so similarly for the FM scenario what we get is a situation whereby instead of having um, a single series of these things if we take the carrier and turn that into a square wave then we will have a set of sidebands for each of the harmonics and if we do it the other way around you just do that yourself okay cool uh, next one code some multiplexing and demultiplexing obviously the challenge here is what the hell is multiplexing and demultiplexing they are both switching scenarios and multiplexing is switching between multiple inputs uh, and this is done with select.ar in super collider so we select which Thing in terms of the index so here I can put um, let's go do a round robin so I will take um, LF saw tooth wave running at 5 Hertz and having a range between um, 0 and 3 okay and then what I will switch between should be a, an array of things. Let's do white noise dot AR. Let's do a sine oscillator at 100 hertz. And let's do um, what else is exciting? It's horribly exciting things, aren't they? Uh, let's do a square wave at more exciting 40 hertz. Uh, so what, sh what sh is recommended here is to uh, obviously make sure that the right things happen okay so that's a bit fast for my uh, catching it okay so that's how you create multiplexing how you create switching between multiple inputs so these are my three inputs and my output is obviously what I hear okay so now let's try to create demultiplexing which has multiple uh, outputs and a single input okay so uh, how do we do that well I can create multiple outputs in many ways let's do this in a funny way obviously uh, let's uh, fill an array of three different uh, bandpass filters bpf.ar now let's make them uh, well let's make them random so we take uh, 300 range random to 3000 and that would be my frequency whereas my input will be something I call input 
okay so those are the three inputs now what's the issue here uh, lack of preparation obviously rushing ahead into life uh, because here I have a, something called input which is the same for all three of these so it is kind of problematic okay so how I can solve this is I can take the index here so when I run an iterative function like this then the index will take on values starting at zero and incrementing by one for every next iteration and using that I can actually index into an array of different things so I can create a list of input signals so I will reuse these three things to be my inputs to the bound pass filter am I getting totally confused here so <laughs> we did multiplexing so multiple inputs to a single output and now we want a single input to multiple outputs okay now all these multiple outputs will have different inputs by default because if I set them to have the same input then I cannot really root this thing am I saying the right thing here so I'm trying to route it to multiple outputs and this is the case because what you get is that uh, there is no stopping a signal so this is quite crucial on a super collider server and anyhow in a real-time processing scenario there is no stopping the signal signals keep running what you can do is you can mute a signal so actually what I have to do is I have to create three existing uh, things uh, but at this stage let me just make sure that I can switch between three inputs in this fashion so what I expect here is to have uh, the input to be an array of three signals as it specified here the output to be an array of three filtered signals and then I can listen to them uh, isolated so that I verify that this is doing the right thing so let's listen to the first filtered noise well this is a funny one filtered sine wave hell I uh, can't really hear it but it's there seems like it's there and then a filtered uh, square wave okay so that shows that this does work and then the question is how do I actually mimic sending one thing to three outputs uh, exclusively so in this case my input becomes let's just do a white noise okay and then what do I do well I have to create an array of signals which will in sequence go through these uh, go go between silence and noise right this is this is the only thing I can do here so what I would have to do then is mute different signals at different times so muting a signal is multiplying it with a zero so actually uh, in, in, in a server real-time signal processing uh, environment you don't stop things typically things constantly run and you don't have an if statement which is typically a kind of a traffic control in terms of you know run a branch of code or don't run a branch of code and that's the trick here all the branches of server UGen code constantly run okay so I have to create a muting trick here and therefore I'm gonna create a low frequency sawtooth wave again which goes between sorry which go, has the frequency of let's take a similar frequency half Hertz and the range will again be between 0 and 3 which means it actually terminates just when it reaches 3 and goes back to 0 okay 
And then what I can do here is I can say I will multiply the in with, uh, this will be my uh, control signal. Okay. And this is not a tilde here. So I will multiply my in with a signal which is essentially control is smaller than one. Okay, so when you have a conditional like this, it yields either a, a zero or a one. It yields a one for true and zero for false. Okay, so what I can do is hopefully already hear this happen. So what I expect to hear is something, uh, but I don't hear anything because in is, oh yeah, I would have to uh, create other things here as well. Let's just do other ins. Okay, but I'm listening to only the first uh, filter here and therefore I will hear the filtered noise one third of the time. Okay, now if I listen to the sum of the arrays here then I will hear one filtered I would have hoped so. Sum out dot sum play. Did I badly select this? Okay, so what I hear there is uh, one third of the time I hear the filtered frequency, but these two are constantly running. Okay, so this one will be fairly straightforward because this one is control signal larger than two. And then what do we do with this one? Well, uh, you can do this in multiple ways. Typically, uh, well, I'm not making this very efficient because I could create that out of these two and uh, save some uh, computation. But I'm not worried about that. So what I can do is I can do a kind of an end type logical operation because if I multiply with two conditionals like this, then in order for this to yield one, I would have to have both of these at one. If either of these conditionals is zero, then the whole thing is just a mute. Okay, So it has to be larger than one and smaller than two. Okay. So maybe my filter frequencies weren't distinct enough. And here they are. So hopefully you can hear that. So I'm technically demultiplexing. And the question arises, does this make sense? Because I'm actually uh, making it uh, rather complex. I'll leave you to answer that. Great. Going on, good tempo so far. Uh, I wanted to have slightly shorter demo than the usual full hour. Let's create panning and balancing with variable curves. Okay, so I've explained the thing about curves. And the message was that if I have um, a signal that travels between 0 and 1, so let's take a fairly s slow one here, uh, and we take a range 0 to 1, then I can take this to any old um, power so exponentiate it. I'm going to play a 10 hertz sine wave just not to break my stuff with uh, DC signals. Uh, so I can exponentiate it anyhow I want and I should retain the range between 0 and 1 and change the curvature. So let's verify this. If I pull this, uh, these values, let's verify that they're going up uh, from 0 to 1 uh, in a fairly steady fashion. 
I'll increase the frequency here so we get a better view of this. Okay, so that's fairly reliable. And then the message was that if I exponentiate this, let's take a square root, which is the exponent of half to the power of half. Then I expect a peaking thing. So if you look at this one, it climbs up quicker. It goes from 0 to 0.3456 and then it slows down 77889 and then reaches 1, supposedly. And if I have an exponent which is higher than 1, if I have 2 which is squaring, then I will get a signal. Ooh. I will get a signal which sticks to the 0 and then starts climbing up and eventually reaches number 1. Uh, excellent. So what are we looking at here is panning and balancing with variable curves. So in order to do that, uh, what I can do is create, call this my uh, uh, left gain. Okay. And then if I say uh, sine oscillator, let's make this an audible frequency uh, at 1k times left gain, then I already have a channel which is which has a variable curvature for the for uh, the fade in okay so that would be one thing and then the other side the right gain could be one minus that left gain okay uh, now I will pull this one to demonstrate something exciting which is uh, that they don't meet in the middle okay I'm not sure can we see that uh, the thing is that if this is um, uh, what am I trying to say if this is a uh, an exponent so if, if this is a, a, a kind of a, if this is a squaring uh, transfer then it drops and climbs from there and if I invert that I actually get something that starts and sticks to the top and then drops quickly so they are not symmetrical uh, like that and maybe I can play a bit with the grapher to show this because it's actually pure math. So if I do x square, I get this. And if I do uh, 1 minus x square, I get this. You see? So they don't meet in the middle. They meet here. Uh, and in terms of maths, what I would have to do is do 1. Oh, God. This is... Uh, slightly cumbersome with the brackets here. So I do 1 minus x and that to the square. Okay, and then they do meet in the middle. You see? And then if I take instead of the square, I take 0 0.2 for both cases. Uh, just to verify that, I'll take 0 0.2. Again, they meet in the middle. Okay, so I have a variable curvature panning like that. Uh, so in this case, what I would have to do to be accurate is make this a control signal. Uh, this one here. Okay, then I would have something which is my curve. Let's call it like that. Currently it is 2. And then for the left signal, I would have to do control to the power of curve. And for the right channel, I would have to have control to the power of one minus, sorry, to the power of curve 
but it is one minus control to the power of curve. Okay, so if that works well, then uh, they do meet in the middle someplace, which is right here. Okay, so they start, one is at top, one is at the bottom, and in the middle they meet. So this would be uh, difficult to demonstrate with my little um, mono setup here. Uh, but in essence, in order to do this, you could say this is my signal. And then you have a stereo output. On one hand side you have a signal times left gain. And on the right hand side you have signal times the right gain. And that is my variable curve panning. Okay, uh, keeping it short, forget the balancing, do the balancing yourself, ask me if you get stuck. Great, let's create amplitude modulation depth that is independent of maximum gain. Okay, so what is the issue here? It is something that I've explained in the lecture, so I won't go into this, although I might have to rock up that little uh, actually I don't it's really easy in super collider so if, if we didn't have the range thing it would be difficult so if you want to do the difficult version go ahead I'm determined to make this a short explosive funny uh, demo okay so uh, here is white noise and we multiply that with the sine oscillator which runs at a fairly slow rate and for a full range uh, amplitude modulation we put it range 0 to 1 okay so let's verify that first of all and then in order to create a variable which is called depth which is currently 1 and which can go from 0 to 1, we have to figure out that if the depth is 0, then we want the range to be 1 to 1, and if the depth is 1, we want the range that is 0 to 1. Okay, so actually here the bottom of the range will keep changing, which will be 1 minus the depth, because when the depth is 1 this needs to be 0 and when the depth is 0 this needs to be 1 so if my depth is 1 I get that if my depth is 0 I get no AM and if my depth is 0 0.5 then I get sort of half depth and the point here is that the maximum is always at one so I don't compromise the gain uh, thanks to range operator or method I should call it this is really simple in super collider uh, <coughs> doing it in max MSP is a bit more cumbersome but never mind that now we are really good on time here code FM with index and harmonicity parameters okay so to do that I will bring up the, uh, the, the the lecture material in which at the bottom I have this sketch no oh, bad oh, horrible hello uh, here we go again where are we so this is the sketch actually I should uh, open it so it stays with us okay that's my sketch which I want to have continuous sight of while I'm coding it uh, so what is it uh, we have an FM scheme and we have a few parameters so the first parameter will be I will call it pitch if the other two parameters aren't horribly off you will actually recognize that frequency to be the pitch 
uh, I will have one parameter which is the index of modulation two I will have one parameter which is harmonicity which is 1.5 okay so what are we saying here we have some intermediate values here uh, and we have two oscillators so let's see if we can get this done now first of all this intermediate value is used twice so I will put it in a variable saving computation supposedly uh, so that will be something that I will call CH carrier times harmonicity so this will be my uh, pitch times harmo so that's the output of this multiplication and this will become the frequency of my modulator so my modulator is a sine oscillator that runs at a specific frequency namely the CH frequency the amplitude the multiplier to this one will be the CH times the modulation index okay so I can say that this is actually multiplied by the CH itself and multiply by the index okay and then my actual output is a sine oscillator which has the frequency of pitch plus mod and that should be it okay so let's test this one so we should have a fixed pitch 440 playing like this uh, except uh, some mistakes I made uh, what's going on here yep index needs a little tilde here okay and then if this works well then regardless of the pitch the you see the actual char character of this synth is the same you recognize it okay now if I change the harmonicity let's go to four point something odd sounds like that 440 sounds like this so you kind of recognize it as being the same instrument and then if I really go crazy with the index then likely I lose the sense of pitch yeah, so I, I, I'd still have an FM synth but the index of modulation is such that the pitch is not clear great that was quick finally code feedback FM okay so this is a tricky one because we need a single sample feedback so as I said earlier one way to do this is to kill them all I'm first killing my server then I'm gonna say that server dot options dot uh, block size uh, should be one sorry server that options okay and then I can boot the server again so I have a block size one uh, I could check that I do have a block size one feedback so the way I done this last time was by having a trig which is a very short impulse of value one and extremely short duration did this work I kind of don't remember it so let's uh, plot that just to see that little old trigger okay that's my really short one sample trigger and then what I've done is I've created a feedback loop such that I see this trigger recur uh, so the feedback loop consists of local uh, in oh, bloody hell. 
uh, local in dot ar which is the coming back of it and the local out which is the way i send it into the feedback so what i send into the feedback is my signal plus the return of it okay and because i'm kind of listening to this as well what i will do is i will oh no i won't be listening to this but i will make it decay i will make it uh, decay over time and uh, that's horrible because it doesn't work let's see a plus uh, okay maybe because i have two local ins that might be an issue uh, although it shouldn't let's find out no uh, what's happening here so i'm sending out the trigger plus the feedback of that that's default that should be fine uh, let's let's try without this oh i think i know what is the issue here it's which signal i'm listening to uh, so i'm sending a signal here but i am not so i will i will call this uh, a equals a plus local in so i'm summing it with the feedback I'm sending that to local out and I'm listening. I'm actually outputting the signal. And there it is. So at this stage, it is fixed at a high value. And if I attenuate that, then hopefully there it is. It's my decay. Okay, so you see it, it's actually connecting samples. Uh, and uh, well, I was so quick. I have the time to um, demonstrate what happens otherwise. So if we kill this server, have a block size 32, boot it back again and run the same code, then this is what you get, right? So the feedback has been delayed by 32 samples, which is the block size of the server. Okay, excellent. Uh, back again kill the servers block size one boot okay so now comes the question what happens if i feed back the uh, output of a sine wave into its frequency input okay so here we go uh, sine oscillator dot ar i will first make sure i think i need a fairly high frequency for plotting it, let's just make sure that we see a decent uh, period of this. I can actually go lower. Let's see this one. Yes. Okay. So what I'm saying then here is that my frequency has to add in the local in dot ar. Okay, so I'm taking the feedback back into the frequency and what I'm sending out is the actual sine wave output. And this sine wave yields a bipolar value between minus one and plus one. So what I expect is to go between 99 and 101 in this case. And you don't see it much. So what I would have to do then is increase this let's go by 50 and that's what you get so you get the compression of the wave in the first half and then the expansion in the second half and in this case what i get as well is that it doesn't go back to zero which uh, probably has to do with this being a linear scaling and this is the task for the advanced listeners make it yield back to zero right on time figure that one out ha huh. thank you for watching and goodbye